Hello, our passage today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, um, chapter 23, verses 26 to 43. It's a very intense passage, this, and it's really set me off in all sorts of ways reading it. It's, it's a passage which is right at the heart of our faith, it's the crucifixion of Jesus. And I suppose it's, it's one of those passages that, although there are, you know, clearly in the, in, in, the, in the season we'd expect to hear it and read it, but if we read it out of, out of, out of time, as it were, it's a really quite thought-provoking. And it's an account of the crucifixion of Jesus. The soldiers led Jesus away, and as they were going, they met a man from Cyrene named Simon who was coming into the city from the country. They seized him, put the cross on him, and made him carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed him. Among them were some women who were weeping and wailing for him. Jesus turned to them and said, Women of Jerusalem, don't cry for me, but for yourselves and your children. For the days are coming when people will say, How lucky are the women who never had children, who never bore babies, who never nursed them. That will be the time when people will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, hide us. For if such things as these are done when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two other men, both of them criminals, were also led out to be put to death with Jesus. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there, and the two criminals, one on his right and the other on his left. Jesus said, Forgive them, Father, they don't know what they are doing. They divided his clothes amongst themselves, by throwing dice. The people stood there watching while the Jewish leaders jeered at him. He saved others, let him save himself, if he is the Messiah whom God has chosen. The soldiers also mocked him. They came up to him and offered him cheap wine and said, Save yourself, if you are the king of the Jews. Above him were written these words, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals hanging there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other one, however, rebuked him, saying, Don't you fear God? You received the same sentence as he did. Ours, however, is only right because we are getting what we deserve for what we did. But he has done no wrong. And he said to Jesus, Remember me, Jesus, when you come as king. Jesus said to him, I promise you that today you will be in paradise with me. And it's a very affecting passage, isn't it? For, for us as Christians, it's when everything that's led up to this and, and comes afterwards is, is compressed, isn't it? All the passion predictions that we've had, Jesus knew that this day would come. And, and it's all pushed together in this very intense passage. So we've had Jesus brought before Pilate in the preceding verses, sent to Herod, Sentenced to death from Pilate when he comes back. So he's been through this torturous process of being um, judged. The irony being, of course, that neither Herod nor, nor Pilate were out to get Jesus. It's the pressure of pressure of a crowd, isn't it? A throng. So we end up with our the events in our passage. And it's just the abject cruelty, isn't it? In it, I think that, that, that 
that hurts even now. The cruelty of the, of the soldiers. And then you've got that contrasting with the crowds, the, the women who are mentioned, who are weeping and wailing for Jesus. And then we've got this scenario with the, with the two criminals who were crucified alongside him. And the contrast between those two, one of whom also shows great cruelty to Jesus, mocking him. And then the contrast with the other one. You, you can see that he and his, the, the other person, the other criminal, are being judged for something they did. But that Jesus has done no wrong. And he asked Jesus to remember him when he comes as king. So this man has, has faith in Jesus, doesn't he? And Jesus says, promises him that he'll be with Jesus. So there's so much in this, this that plays out that we can see in the world around us today. The cruelty. The maybe unexpected um, faith and um, self awareness of one of the one of the people who has been crucified with Jesus, and it's all compressed into this passage. So, as Christians, this is yeah, this is at the heart of our faith, isn't it? When God came came amongst us, uh, this is what. This is what happened to him. This is how he was treated. And this, this, this as Christians, this, this is the heart of it. And it's, as I said, to me, it's because, you know, at, at Easter, you know, we, we expect to hear this passage or other passages. And I wonder sometimes if, if you know, because we expect them, that we hear them and we read them. But reading it out of out of time, if you will, out of the normal timing, in, in uh, here we are in uh, July. <laughs> it's almost more powerful, I think, than that. There we are. Our Jesus, our Saviour, crucified so cruelly. Amen.